turns out terrible, if the, if the performance turns out terrible, destroy the recording and let no one see it. Um, thank you. Thank you for coming today. Um, I'll start with one that I think some of you have heard about 10,000 times, but I know at least a couple of you have never heard it at all. So there's my excuse. Look up in the sky. No, not the sky. In the coffee shop, sitting at the corner table, alone, scrolling down his cell phone with two days growth of beard and a milk stain on his pants. Is it a bird? Is it a plane? Is it a dog? Is it a waffle iron? Is it a shoe? No, it's adequate man. Adequate man, faster than a speeding hamster, more powerful than a toddler, able to leap over a tall noodle in a single bound. Adequate man, when trouble rears its head, does he ignore it? No, he stays home and reads about it on the internet. When faced with injustice, does he lie down? No, he sits and tells others on social media to do something. When people are needy, does he neglect them? No, he donates $5 to the cause if it's tax deductible. When trash needs to be taken out, when dishes need to be dried, when the dog needs to be walked, he does it. Whatever the crisis, whatever the threat, citizens know they can call on him for the bare minimum. Tremble before the powers of adequate man, his 2020 vision, his average physical strength, his ability to melt steel with the help of welding equipment, his bachelor's degree in environmental studies, his office data entry job, the force of which has allowed him to pay off part of his student loan, his capability of viewing an entire Netflix series in one binge, his gift for devouring six pizza slices in one meal. Watch Adequate Man and you will believe a man can fly, provided that he makes the airport gate on time. Adequate Man and his loyal sidekick, Drinking Buddy, what a duo. Together they rid the world of craft beer and chicken wings while they bravely watch hockey and basketball on the pub TV. When adequate man battles against a tough trivia question, who steps in with the right answer every time? Drinking buddy. And when adequate man faces another lonely Saturday evening, whom does he call on for help? Drinking Buddy, of course. With Drinking Buddy, six packs and Xbox games, both of them team up to save the night once more. Feel the wrath of the mortal enemies of Adequate Man, the landlord who keeps reminding him the rent is late, the neighborhood tabby cat who triggers his allergies, the cute perky ex who just wants to be friends now, the messy, filthy apartment that still refuses to clean itself, and his ultimate nemesis. The Joker. Specifically, his old high school acquaintance, Bob, who now works in upper management at the same company. Still working in data entry, eh, adequate man? Don't let the high stress get to you. <laughs> oh, the laughter. The crazed, mocking laughter. One day, Bob, you will get yours. And so, citizens, the next time you need a hero, a hero who can help you rake your leaves or give you a lift to the airport or take money at the door at your next poetry event. You know whom to look for. Look over there, smoking behind the 7-Eleven. Is it a bird? Is it a plane? Is it a no smoking sign on a plane? Is it a fidget spinner? Is it a chocolate teapot? Is it a ladle? Is it a bidet? Is it a jack in the box? Is it a designer purse? Is it a tea cozy? Is it a tooth grill? Is it a toast rack? Is it an egg slicer? Is it a mattress tag that reads, do not remove? No, it's adequate man, the quintessential hero of our times. Thank you, that was called adequate man in case you didn't figure that out. And uh, you know what? Valentine's day is coming up soon. So I got a special Valentine's day piece for you. So hope this really uh, gets you in a, into the mood. This is called an honest proposal. My dear, my love, please accept my hand in marriage. There's nothing more romantic I can think of. Just think of it. Think of the lovely life we'll share. Think of the rapturous wedding we'll hold. Think of the passionate honeymoon. Think of the limitless lovemaking. Think of the joy of stepping into our first house. Think of the tears we'll shed when our first child is born. Think of the pride we'll feel watching our child grow up. Think of the slightly fewer tears we'll shed when our second child is born. Think of the stretch marks you'll have. Just think of it. Think of the years of family dinners spent together. 
Think of the birthday parties and Christmas mornings. Think of the endless school hockey games and plays. Think of the countless sibling fights we'll break up. Think of the disappointing report cards. Think of the minimal amount of tears we'll shed when our third child is born. Think of the neglect our middle child will suffer. Think of the times our middle child will act out because of our neglect. Think of the moment the cop will tell us our middle child has been arrested for vandalism. Just think of it. Think of the dull daily routine into which our lives will plummet. Think of the day we'll stop going out without the children. Think of the evening sitting in front of the TV and never speaking to each other. Think of the passive aggressive verbal jabs we'll poke at each other. Think of the moment we'll forget what we saw in each other in the first place. Think of the screaming arguments our children will overhear when they're in bed. Think of the slamming doors and hurled plates. Think of the silent treatments and insincere apologies. Think of the therapy bills our children will pay. Just think of it. Think of the night I'll catch you receiving cunnilingus from my brother's weightlifting trainer. Think of the condescending tone you'll adopt to mock my sexual inadequacy. Think of the tiny basement apartment into which I'll move. Think of the vicious, exhausting court battle we'll prolong for months. Think of the enormous legal bills and time wasted. Think of the way we'll make our children choose which of us they love more. Think of the friends we'll lose and the gossip they'll share. Think of the size my belly will grow as I just stop caring. Think of the botched plastic surgery that'll symbolize your desperate drive to stay young. Just think of it. Think of the thousands of lonely nights of TV dinners and masturbation. Think of the chronic online stalking of old high school crushes. Think of the, uh, oh, you're leaving. Oh, I suppose you need more time to think. I'll be waiting here with this beautiful tungsten wedding ring. A life together. Just think of it. Thank you, that was an honest proposal. Next up, um, I feel I should do something from my CD. This is my CD, and I've been trying to get rid of these CDs for like eight, I think David has a copy actually, if I remember right, but I could be wrong. Been trying to get rid of these CDs for eight years. It's called This Album is Knit Fanny, and I'll put the info about that in the chat. So this is from the CD, it's called Safety Instructions. Congratulations on your purchase of the new Darwina 2023 microwave oven. Your Darwina microwave oven will provide first-rate microwave cookery for you and your family for years to come. Before you begin operating your Darwina microwave oven, please read the following safety instructions in order to maximize your continuing satisfaction with our product. Do not operate your Darwina microwave oven if the door cannot close properly or if it is bent in any way. Do not use if the hinges or latches are broken. Do not stand in front of the Darwina microwave oven for a long period of time, as this has been known to cause tumors. Do not leave an operating Darwina microwave oven unattended. Do not use a brown paper bag to cook popcorn as this creates a risk of fire. Do not put your face or any other body part inside your Darwina microwave oven while it is operating. Do not bring your Darwina microwave oven into the shower or bathtub with you. Do not lift your Darwina microwave oven in the air and strike it upon your head repeatedly. This has been known to cause injury. Do not stand under a falling Darwina microwave oven after it has been dropped from a tall building. Do not place your Darwina microwave oven in a catapult and then have someone release the catapult while you are standing within the oven's flight path. This can be rather dangerous. Do not use your Darwina microwave oven as an ear piercing tool or for home dentistry. Do not play catch with your Darwina microwave oven. Do not attempt to fit your Darwina microwave oven fully into your mouth or any other bodily orifice. Please do not fill your Darwina microwave oven with explosives and then detonate them while you are within one meter of the oven and eating a deli stick. Do not hold your Darwina microwave oven while jumping off a high cliff and trying to fly. Do not hold your Darwina microwave oven while running into an operating airplane propeller. Do not use your Darwina microwave oven to help jam scissors into your crotch. Do not walk with your Darwina microwave oven late at night on random side streets in downtown Detroit. Do not attempt to tweak the nose of a wild grizzly bear while in the vicinity of your Darwina microwave oven. Do not use your Darwina microwave oven as a masturbatory aid. This is not necessarily dangerous, but it is a little weird. Do not attempt to operate your Darwina microwave oven while tied to a railroad track, dangling from a skyscraper, running through enemy, enemy fire across a battlefield, sticking your head out the window of a moving vehicle, playing Russian roulette, waving raw meat in front of a charging bull, diving into an empty swimming pool, eating Drano, drinking arsenic, 
horsing around in a room full of industrial machinery or smoking. Do not attempt to operate your Darwina microwave oven while pulling the trigger of a pistol, only to find that the pistol appears to be out of bullets, and then, out of puzzlement and curiosity, peering down the barrel of said pistol while pulling the trigger again. Thank you for taking the time to read the safety instructions for your new Darwina 2023 microwave oven. Every one of these safety instructions was created as a result of numerous tests involving a multitude of live human and animal subjects many of whom were orphans, kittens, and adorable doe-eyed little bunnies. So that was safety instructions from my CD. Next up, I'll do a relatively new one. Uh, this, is called, <clears throat> this is called Google is your friend. Hey, you know that new Twitter meme? What new Twitter meme? The one with the kangaroo and the Dr. Pepper bottle. Yeah, what about it? I don't really get the joke. What's it about? Google is your friend. Excuse me? Google is your friend. Why don't you look it up online? I could look it up, but you're right here. I thought you might know. Well, it's not worth my time to explain. Look it up. Uh, okay, fine. Oh, by the way, I missed the Jays game last night. You know if they won? Google is your friend. Sorry? Google is your friend. Just look up the score. But you're a Jays fan. I thought you might have watched the game. Yeah, I did, but it's not my responsibility to relay baseball scores to you. I didn't say it was anybody's responsibility because it isn't. Go look it up like a normal person. I, okay, fine, I will. Good, sure. Now I gotta head to work soon. Oh, okay, how's the company doing? Google is your friend. Hmm? Google is your friend. Look it up on the stock exchange or something. But I was just asking out of curiosity since you work there. They don't pay me to satisfy your curiosity. That's on you, look it up. But I was just making conversation. Well, I don't owe you conversation. I don't owe you anything. All right, so dare. Why does it offend you so much when I ask you a simple question? It doesn't offend me. I'm not offended. You react as if you are. That's pretty presumptuous of you to assume you know how I feel about anything. I feel fine if you must know. So why do you lash out at me over a question? I'm not lashing out. I'm just doing you the favor of pointing out you can easily look it up. Google is your friend. But Google is so impersonal. Isn't it more fun to ask another human being? Isn't that what human connection is all about? Isn't it more satisfying to share questions and answers and points of view with other minds? Isn't it more progressive to have a society that openly asks questions and discusses things with nuance and exploration of ideas instead of just silencing each other? Isn't it? No, it isn't! Okay, I'll tell you what it is. It's a sign of your toxic laziness and immaturity. It's a sign you can't be bothered to take responsibility to stay informed. You're so self-absorbed and devoid of empathy that you're willing to waste other people's time manipulating them with inane questions. I think you need serious psychological help. I think you need to take some time to reconsider the way you treat other people. Until you do that work on yourself, you should probably stop trying to connect with others since you clearly have no people skills. All right. I apologize. Do you even know what you're apologizing for? <coughs> for um, everything you just said. And I'll work on myself. Sorry. I didn't realize how you felt. Felt about what? About people asking questions. I didn't know you felt that way. Well, Google is your friend. What? Google is your friend. You should already know. If you looked it up, you would have found my blog, which explains everything I feel. Don't you read my blog? You know something? Sure, Google is my friend. Yes, it is. But you sure the fuck aren't. Goodbye. Hey, hey, where are you going? Come back. Oh, why am I always so lonely? Well, at least Google is my friend. And that was called Google is my friend. And I'll do one more longish one, I think. I think I have time for a, a little bit of flash fiction here. And uh, this one is called uh, Atlantic City. They're dragging me to prison again. That's the way it goes here in Atlantic City. I came here young and naive, expecting a gambling paradise, and found myself in a police state. There's never a warning, never a chance to escape, not even a questioning from the authorities or from those who accuse you. They don't even tell you what your alleged crime is. They grab you and haul you straight to the city's only jail facility. Mind you, it's not so bad once you're there. 
Prisoners in Atlantic City are permitted visitors any time with no limit, and they still allow you to collect some of your work earnings, not your regular base salary. That gets delayed until they let you out. Sometimes they let you out right away if you have the funds to pay, pay the proper fine or if you flash a special card. Sometimes you can get out early if you play along and, shall we say, roll the dice right. Typically, though, you stay incarcerated for a given amount of time and then get out. And you think you're free, but you never are because they'll get you again. They'll drag you off and the whole routine plays out as before. It's a maddening and absurd, an American Kafka tale, but that's how it is here. <sighs> for years, I've yearned to escape Atlantic City, but I can't. It's an endless cycle in which you travel around the city over and over along the same route, seeing the same streets, the same railroads, and none of them ever change. And you can't leave and you never find a true home. Sure, the streets are colorful, as are the buildings on them, but they're all surrounded by a drab gray that never goes away. Where are all the casinos, you ask yourself? Where are the glitz and the glamour? Were these only a myth designed to entrap us all? Oh, there's plenty of money here. I can confirm that. Atlantic City is a rich place full of opportunity, but it's a cutthroat one. Invest well and you can come out on, on top and you rarely have to pay taxes. Find yourself on the wrong street and you can be decimated in less than a blink, depending on who owns the street and what they've built there. Well, they're crazy about real estate in this town. That seems to be the only game around. You can purchase whole avenues at shockingly low prices, 60, 100, 200 bucks. You can buy national railroads and even the city utilities if you get to them before anyone else does, or if they get auctioned off. And the rentals can bring in good cash on the side, especially when you start building homes and accommodations. But Atlantic City has authoritarian methods of collecting these rentals for investors. If they catch you loitering on a competitor's street, they'll make you pay rent for being there. That's not so bad, usually just a few bucks, until the houses and hotels start going up and then you have to be careful. I went through a rough spot not long ago when I was stuck on the boardwalk and the only place to stay was that great red hotel. They charged me $2,000 just for one night, 2,000, and I had no choice. It could have plunged me into instant bankruptcy. How lucky I had my own property as a backup. It was devastating though. I had to sell all of my houses on Kentucky, Indiana and Illinois avenues at half price. And then I had to mortgage those same streets. I barely collected enough. Thank God I received my regular salary right after I left the boardwalk. And then by chance, they dragged me off to prison again for no conceivable reason. That's the funniest thing about Atlantic City. Sometimes jail is a haven. You can relax and avoid the unpredictable pitfalls of the real estate market. Who knows what might have happened to me if I hadn't been safe in jail, still free to collect rent on my own property. I might have stepped on the wrong spot again and then been knocked out of the game for keeps. Don't get me wrong, there are other ways to make money in this town, but they're infrequent and unreliable. There are opera nights and Christmas funds. There's the occasional beauty contest. I came in second place once and received $10. I never, never found out what the first prize was. If you're lucky, you can get a couple of hundred dollars when there's a bank error in your favor. You might get money when your building and loan matures. I once received a dividend of 50 bucks, although I can't remember buying any corporate shares. Some of these side income sources seem shady and dubious indeed. There's that free parking spot in the middle of town. I don't know what's going on there, but every time I park my car there, the parking attendant gives me money, $500 in cash at least, hands it to me as if it's the most normal thing in the world. But what for, I ask him, where is this money coming from? He never tells me, just smiles and walks away. And I take the money every time, but something feels wrong about it. Even by the twisted logic of this town, it feels like something outside of the rules. I avoid parking there these days. Who knows what dirty scheme they're involved in. Dear God, how I wish I could leave Atlantic City. After years of roaming here, of making and losing money so randomly, I've come to find it the most boring and meaningless place in existence. I dream of other lives. Surely I could have been anything else. A pair of ragged claws. Or perhaps I could have been a world conqueror. Dominating, dominating nations from Argentina to Kamchatka. Or I could have been a sleuth solving murders in, a great ma in great mansions. Or an island settler building roads and settlements in exchange for sheep and wood. Or a Navy captain sinking cruisers and submarines with well-aimed missiles. A simple rail passenger, a dungeon master, a surgeon 
with hands so skilled that the instruments never touched the sides of the incisions. I could have been a hippo. I swear I'd be willing to transform into a hippopotamus living on nothing but giant white marbles to get out of this town for a day. Why, Lord, why such a cruel fate? What's this? I'm free again. Looks like chance has intervened once more and I'm spared another brief prison term. I suppose I'll make a brief pit stop at the waterworks. Today they're charging me a whopping $120 just to wander around the planet. It's absurd, but that's the way things go here. Someday I may make it out of Atlantic City. Until then, please keep a bed free for me at Marvin Gardens. So that was Atlantic City. My name is Jeff Cottrell, and I have a CD for sale, and I have my debut novel, Hate Story, which is also uh, for sale. And I will put links to those things and some upcoming events in the chat. Thank you very much for coming. Hope you had a good time this afternoon or tonight or whatever it is for you.